I'm in Manhattan. The cab pulls up, and I get out. Walk towards a restaurant. It's called Sexy Fish. It's a busy restaurant. Being led over to my table, I see my date up ahead and sit down. Walk over, and my face falls. You've got to be kidding me. You, you're here? No, oh, it's a damn mirror. You look furious. You actually had the cheek to set up this date. You're unbelievable. I didn't set up anything. This is, or was, a blind date. Now, I'm leaving. Why do you get to leave? I'm more offended to be set up with you, so I should be the one to go. Yeah, I'm walking off. Start walking off. Or it gets up and follows me out. Sean, I didn't do anything wrong. What? On our last date, I did nothing wrong. Are you kidding me? Fine, I shouldn't have left the date to go talk to my ex, but you spent the whole night talking about your ex. So, what? It was just tit for tat? That's right, motherfucker. It was tit for tat, and you got everything you deserved. I take a seat at the bar. She wasn't an ex. We were married. Married or not, you still spent a whole evening talking about her. I did not do that. Look, I was upset with myself for staying long enough for us to eat our desserts. Yeah, honey. That level of dumbness was like having no sunscreen in the Australian outback. That we agree on. Look, I was divorcing her, so I was trying to make sense of it. We were on a date. You should have focused your energy on me and not your ex. True, but my heart was breaking. So why were you on a date when you weren't ready to move on? I thought I was ready. You weren't, and you wasted my time. I get up from the bar and start heading out of the restaurant. Laura follows me. At least you more than made up for it by sleeping with your ex. Who says we slept together? You're telling me you didn't. I did, but that doesn't give you the right to assume things. I'm calling a taxi and heading home. I'm a lady, and it's nighttime. We walk out of the restaurant. Yeah, so? You need to make sure I get home safely. You live in the opposite direction of where I'm going. So we're not taking the same taxi. Goodbye. I whistle for a taxi. The cab pulls up. I open the door. Laura pushes me aside and gets in. Hey, this is my cab. Then why am I sitting in it? You know what? I'll wait for another one. I know your ex-wife. Did you say? You heard me. I know your ex-wife. She works in my office. Does she? Last I heard, she was a florist. Maybe she fancied a career change. Whatever the reason, she's going for the same managerial promotion as me. Why are you telling me this? Do you still love her? No. Yeah, you do. I can tell you stories about her and what she's up to. Why would you do that? I'll do it in exchange for you taking me to a bar. You want Carrie back. So you're the key for me to get her back? That's right, motherfucker. Get into the cab, and it pulls away. We enter a bar in Midtown. This place is plush. Led to a table by one of the bar staff. We take a seat. Aura orders herself a cocktail. She's gone for the strawberry daiquiri. I've gone for the Pilsner Urquell. Aura, we're silent in the cab. Tell me what my ex-wife is up to. I don't know. I lied to get you here. What did you say? You heard me. I'm out of here. Stand up from my chair. Our first meeting was magical, so why couldn't you extend that magic moment to our first official date? Sit back down. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ruin our date. I was just... lost. What do you mean, lost? 
I ever tell you why Carrie left? I think so. You said she cheated? Uh, she didn't. I wanted your sympathy. Oh, so what happened? I'm not sure I'm ready to talk about it yet. I'm not going to judge you. I respect you as a person. I want to support you. Fine. You say I'm, uh, overweight? A little. Why do you ask? I ask because it's a clue as to why Carrie left me. Okay. Explain more. I'm confused. Okay. I've been overeating for months. I suffer from depression. And my side effect is overeating. Oh. Anyway, Harry began warning me of the consequences of my actions about three months before we broke up. But... You wouldn't listen to her. I didn't feel anything was wrong with my eating habits. So what changed? What made her leave? Harry and I started discussing the possibility of having children. Right. I had a previous relationship, and I knew I had a low sperm count. Okay. Then, we went for a routine checkup. The doctors took some blood and did some checks. What was the result? What did they find? It warned me. If I kept eating, I could develop pre-diabetes. So that was your first warning? Yep. Anyway, it freaked out Carrie. She started thinking she could lose me. By losing you, did Carrie think you could die? Yeah. So she hired a dietitian for me. She threw away all my depressing food. We got a solid plan together. I'm guessing you blew it? Big time. One night, I was so tired from eating terrible food, so I ordered a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Mm, this doesn't bode well. You're spot on. So Carrie found out and she dumped you? No. After about five pieces of chicken in my mouth, I had a massive heart attack. Seriously? Yeah. I was in the hospital for two weeks. Doctors thought I needed heart surgery. Did you? Thankfully, no. Anyway, this story's point is that it got too much for Carrie. In the end, she decided to end our marriage. Wow. About a week later, Carrie sent me divorce papers. That was the end of that. I'm so sorry you went through that. Ah, uh, it was my fault it all ended. Still, she promised to love you in sickness and health. Well, maybe she didn't love me after all. Eh, you think? <laughs> I really do like you. Like you too. The heart attack story didn't scare me. Glad to hear that. I want to find out more about you. Why? Why do you think? Have a guess. I'm still recovering from the breakup of my marriage, Laura. What are you saying? Saying... I'm not sure I'm ready for another relationship. I'm not pushing for that. I'm trying to open the door to the possibility of that. And that's where the problems lie for me. I'm not looking to start something right away with you. I promise. Yeah. But you want an option. Maybe. Is that such a bad thing? Look unsure. Start to sweat. It's like I'm in a sauna. I need to use the bathroom. Do you excuse me? I'll be here. Get up and walk towards the men's restroom. As I know this bar, I know there's a door next to the toilets. Doors lead to the backyard of the bar. Yep. I'm getting the hell out of here. Sorry, but the decision has been made. Whoa, 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 there. Before you judge me, I'm doing the right thing. Laura is a sweet woman. She shouldn't have to saddle up with Mr. Fatso here. Yeah, I'm insulting myself, so fat-shaming myself shouldn't piss you off. 
Although I'd like to put out a disclaimer that I believe fat people are beautiful. I hope that makes you hate me less. Back to what I was talking about. What was I talking about? Right. So, Laura deserves a life with someone who has a future. I barely have one. I don't know what tomorrow brings, but I do know that tomorrow might bring her the pain of losing me. I don't want Laura to be mixed up with that. She deserves better. I walk out of the bar. Laura knocks on the men's restroom door. Sean, are you okay? You've been in there for a long time. I'm getting worried. Laura waits for a beat. There's nothing but silence. Finally, she walks into the restroom. All the toilet cubicles look empty. There's no one here. It hits Laura what has happened. She looks furious. She takes out her cell phone from her coat. She makes a call to her dad, Jasper. Dad, I need you to open up a case. No, I need someone found. Dad, you're a private investigator. I'm not asking for a huge favor. I need this guy found. He's a potential love interest. I don't care how creepy it sounds. Can you find him, or do I need to involve one of your competitors? Yeah, I'll pay your going rate. Thank you. I'll send you an email with his details. Thank you. Bye. Laura walks out of the bar. She looks determined. She looks focused. She knows what she wants. The question is, will she get it? Find out if she does in the next episode. This was Ready for Love. It was voiced by me, Amanda McKnight, and Jake Johnston. The show was written, produced, and directed by Joao Nacida. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Ready for Love. Please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and be sure to subscribe to the podcast on all your favorite podcast listening apps. Also, please share this series with family and friends. Thank you. That Love Podcast is active on Twitter at That Love Pod, and on Instagram and Facebook at That Love Podcast. Hi, I'm Melanie Rose of Twitch fame, world fame, and I guess that love podcast fame. And cue gagging noises. I'm gagging because of the latter mention. Ah, you got that. So why are we here, right? I have a brand spanking new show coming soon on that lover's podcast or whatever the name is. You've guessed it. I don't pay attention to these promos. I mean, duh, I have a life. Anyway, let me just get my notes. My new show is called I've Got You. Christ, you almost wish this was made up, don't you? What a crap name. I mean, come up with an original title, not this bullshit. Damn you, Joao. In this show, you've got me wanting to gag every time I say the show's title. I play a badass I've Got You follows. Hang on, can I just say that you can't exactly call yourself a badass if your character in the show just spiked your ex's drink and kidnapped him? The slame story point actually happens in the show. I kidnap someone and force him to love me. <laughs> yeah, like I'd force anyone to love me. <laughs> I'm freaking awesome. It's a given people just naturally love me. I mean, duh. Anyway, people come running for my love. I'm legendary. The world freaking knows it. Let's leave it there. Anyway, join us soon on That Love Podcast for a brand new show called I've Got You. A show I don't give a damn about. I've been told to try this last section again, or I won't be asked to return to the podcast. Yeah, like you pay me to be on the podcast, jerk. Ugh, okay. <sighs> Join us for a brand new series called I've Got You, airing soon on That Love Podcast. Thank you, and goodbye. Let me actually Google this stupid podcast. I've never listened to any of my podcast episodes. Damn, I sound good. I'm so freaking talented. I knew it. I just knew it. <laughs>